begin a conversation. I'm happy to answer any questions, but uh, also would love to hear your thoughts or comments about, uh, particularly for those of you who've had a chance to pre-read the uh, PDF document that uh, my colleagues would have shared with you as to what are the sort of uh, particular areas uh, that you are keen to, um, you know, cover or what are some key air issues that you'd like to uh, learn more about from this session. So if you could start popping stuff in chat, that's cool. Otherwise, um, can we temporarily just unmute these, uh, these guys, uh, Imancho or Ajay, to have a bit of a discussion for now? Yes, they have the right to unmute themselves. So I would request Fine. everyone to please start interacting. Also turn on your yeah. camera so that we can see you. Cool. Uh, Himanshu, just to also understand a process mm -hmm. check, how much time do we have? Uh, I, I trust we have sort of some backup time available in the webinar from the Zoom settings point of view, just in case you're running. Yes, sir, we do have. We do have. A little bit, little bit time. Fine. And we're, we're planning to run this for about an hour? Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah, because the last thing, I mean, you know, we're starting a little bit late and depending on Q&A and discussions when we are debriefing at the back end, um, you know, that can get sometimes a bit animated and I'm happy to stay back a little bit longer for those people if that's going on. So we just want to make sure that the Zoom settings don't conk out on us. Yes, sir. Uh, Aditya, Akhil, Ishita, Jaswant, I know you all. Please speak something. Tell us something about yourself. Mini, B, I, T, L, Y. I think we have a... IT guy might need to get muted. <laughs> All right. No questions. Nobody has anything in particular that they want to get out of the session. Krishma, Lakshya, Raghav, Milind. Akhil, are you Akhil Naya, Rishita Sharma. I just have an okay sir from Akshay. Yeah, okay Akshay. <laughs> Anybody um, have any, want to share what are the particular issues or aspects uh, about strategic leadership or strategic thinking that they want to cover out of today's session? Guys, let's be very clear. If you are looking forward to pursue MBA from Jindagaru Business School, you have to be very proactive. Good evening. Yes, Good evening, yes. Yash. Go ahead. Well, I think we are here for the stimulus session about the strategic decision making. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually, yep. yeah, I actually didn't read the PDF in detail, but I just go, went, went through the topic, that's all. Okay. All right. Thank you, Yash. Uh, let me uh, see if there's anybody else. I think Akshi, uh, Ashvi, Ashvi Morakia. I, I would request that if everyone could, when you respond to chat right now, if you could respond to everyone, that way, you know, everyone, others can see as well. So Ashri says, how can I improve my leadership skills being a shy and a bit introvert person? Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, um, that question. I think um, just to clarify in our you know, limited time today, whilst the strategic leadership has a very broad range of, uh, of uh, issues and aspects, um, including decision-making, communication, influencing, et cetera, uh, I want to focus today's discussion mainly on 
uh, the strategic decision making aspects and particularly on the thinking by the strategic leader, their, their co cognition, how their brains are processing complex import, you know, uh, uh, complex and ambiguous information to make strategic decisions in balancing risks and rewards. I, I really want to focus on that subset. And so um, thankfully, that component at least has less to do with uh, um, shyness and introversion and other such personality traits. And um, it certainly um, doesn't necessarily, you know, adversely affect um, those capabilities. So, um, in fact, some in some cases, it might actually even potentially help. So, Ashri, at least on that component, you need not worry about your personality traits. I hope that helps. Any other questions, comments? Uh, what are people looking to get out of? Uh, or some, you know, particular areas, that, or you know, particularly those of you who had a chance to look through the PDF document of there any particular readings or particular points that they found intriguing or interesting or would love to share their thoughts on. Also, um, Himanshu, at some point, we're going to need to take the call about starting regardless of the quorum, because it's like 12 minutes have gone already. Yes, sir. I believe we should start, sir. Okay. Share the screen. All right, can you see, uh, guys, Timanchi, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, cool. Great. So uh, just very quickly, a bit of introduction and agenda setting. Um, really delighted to be having this first of uh, hopefully many interactions with you guys. And this is uh, the idea here of this uh, masterclass is to give you a little bit of a taste of, uh, you know, what it feels like to um, uh, uh, be in a, in a JGBS MBA class. Um, and I'm really happy to be doing this with you. I'm a, uh, you know, a fairly eclectic background person. I like to think of myself as a pracademic in the sense that I've spent long, you know, much more time in corporate, uh, in the corporate, multiple corporate careers, uh, including as a senior partner in strategic, you know, some of the best named strategy consulting firms, private equity funds, uh, uh, serial entrepreneurship, uh, and uh, several, uh, you know, very interesting corporate roles. And uh, then, then uh, also to continue to uh, you know, dabble with a variety of entrepreneurial sort of uh, mentoring and startups and, uh, you know, really delighted to recently join uh, JGBS's Vice Dean. Uh, and my interests are basically in strategic decision making. And so that's what I'm going to try and give you a bit of a sample for. So let me summarize what are some of the key points that we that I'm trying to make and some key takeaways for you. Um, but uh, the point is that many of the, the what I'm covering with you is a fairly advanced topic and a fairly advanced elective. And we recognize that you are, you know, at uh, sort of uh, early stages of, you know, uh, yet to begin the MBA journey. So uh, bear with me if some of the, key, uh, some of the, you know, more, uh, you know, because you've not yet covered some of the more basic concepts, if some of these advanced topics um, are, are still a little bit, um, um, you know, some of the components that I will be synthesizing and joining the dots from, you may not be as familiar with some of those components, but that's fine. Uh, that will come as you go along the MBA journey, but hopefully you will get a flavor for some of these things uh, and the wisdom of some of these points. And more importantly, we want to use uh, some of today's time to give you a little bit of a flavor because some of the points that I'm just about to make on this slide sound a little bit philosophical and a little bit, you know, potentially uh, dry, but I'm going to try and illustrate the so what, uh, the real world implications of these things uh, with a bit of a, a simulation, a real world context simulation that we will try and play out for you. Uh, bear with us 
the technology has some of its limitations, but we will still try to give you, I mean, when you are actually at JGBS, we will run these kinds of simulations with you in asynchronous mode with individual licenses for, for each of the players and playing out these, these decisions over a much longer elapsed time. Uh, but uh, right now during this one hour, we'll just use a small sneak peek and do it in a synchronous mode. And so many of the functionalities will not come across, but we will still try to give you a little bit of a sneak peek at flavor just to get a bit of excitement uh, uh, and trying to you know, help the penny drop about some of the points um, that I'm making. And so, like I said, I'm largely focusing today's session more, more on strategic decision-making and the thinking behind the, the cognition aspects of key strategic leaders when they face with those decisions. And I'm very much coming at this from avoiding following the herd, avoiding the rat race, you know, thinking, thinking differently, particularly when you are exploring the frontiers of the envelope um, and having to make decisions uh, with limited information and high uncertainty and huge time pressures and huge risk reward, uh, you know, uh, range of outcomes. So this is very much a sneak peek sampler. It's just for you to start to think about some of these issues uh, not to make you, you know, master uh, on any of these dimensions, uh, but for you to start thinking about priorities and uh, reflection for your learning learning journey uh, as as you're about to embark on a very very exciting uh, couple of years um, uh, in the MBA program at JGBS. So the first key takeaway point is that yes, absolutely. Uh, the expand, you know, expanding your toolkit is 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 very helpful and is necessary. And clearly, um, uh, 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 any good MBA program will help you expand your toolkit. But the key thing for you to appreciate is that that is necessary, but not a sufficient uh, for success. In other words, your understanding of some of these key building blocks and their interrelationships that you will get in a good uh, MBA program uh, such as data reasoning, marketing, financial statements, finance, strategy, business models, value creation, you know, these sorts of things. These are, you will get a fair few, you know, set of toolkits in each of these areas, and that's useful, but it's not sufficient. And so, and far more important is for you to start to develop an ability to effectively use these tools in real world contexts and situations. And uh, uh, what tools to use in what context and how to use them uh, uh, is an extremely uh, important and valuable skill. And only the better schools, the better programs, uh, such as the one at JGBS, which lays an, a significant emphasis on experiential learning and high touch personalization and mentoring is where there is a better opportunity to develop this effective use of tools. But even that will not happen by you just being silent participants, even in webinars like this. In the entire program, you have to be much more proactive. And so I encourage you guys to start to do that, at least for today's session. If you just sit here for a tune in and listen in. Uh, um, one of the other key points is to avoid the traps of being taught and merely trying to maximize marks or grades or get a tappa uh, rubber stamp to be MBA, 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 or merely just capturing the jargon and concepts of some of the you know, uh, uh, components about the first point that I was mentioning about the toolkits. And I think that's where a lot of the critique and criticism of people who go to MBA programs comes from because they largely, you know, stick to this kind of stuff that's in the red and largely just know, you know, can sort of uh, flaunt some of the tools that they know about, but they don't really know how to use them uh, effectively in a given context. And so having talked about whilst it's easier to say what not to do, which is the stuff in red, the stuff to actually work to you know, start strengthening your abilities on is a fairly long journey. It's a journey that you will begin in your MBA program at JGBS, but it's a journey that will need to continue and a continuous learning journey for the you know, significant part in, uh, of your career. 
careers. And in fact, most likely, more likely than not, most of you will have multiple careers. And so you're, you're working on strengthening your abilities in these five or six areas that I've mentioned down below, even starting to appreciate what those are about uh, will be a long process. So uh, not by any means will you become masters on these areas in today's session, certainly not in one hour, nor necessarily will you become masters uh, in, these, uh, in these issues over the, the course of your two-year journey in the MBA, but certainly you should make a lot more progress in these areas. And a lot of these things will not necessarily be classroom topics, but you're training your brain and developing your skills uh, by, by, uh, by focusing on some of these things. And the key, the first key skill set that I would keep emphasizing is this uh, learning to learn, uh, as opposed to merely being taught. And that's one of the key things is that learning to learn has to come with a significant amount of intellectual curiosity and preparation, as opposed to simply rocking up to a session and a classroom and say, okay, well, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the demagogue is going to speak and I am going to absorb. But particularly these last um, five points are the much more complex ones and they build to a large extent on the first three. So, you know, probably the starting point would be the first three areas of learning to learn, critical reasoning, complex part pattern matching and synthesis. synthesis. And even though in the critical and data reasoning, if you think about it, you know, um, most of the, these components are certainly there in most entrance tests that you would be preparing for fairly significantly. But I think the challenge or the pitfall is that most students, average MBA students fall into the pitfall of just practicing critical reasoning just to score high test marks to get into programs, but then they tune out. Whereas the, the real thing about critical reasoning and data reasoning is to keep those antennae on in real world complex situations and apply them uh, at, you know, as often as you can, as opposed to simply to score high marks in a test when you think you're being tested. Uh, so, so that's the key, key, key points. And like I said, they do sound a bit dry. Any questions or doubts uh, at this point in time before I go any further? please pop them up in chat. But essentially, uh, in order to, to give a bit more color and flavor for some of these things, we're gonna play a bit of a, uh, give you a sneak peek, you know, a small sampler for a strate strategic cognition simulation. And uh, after we do that, then we will do a bit of a debrief and a bit of a discussion. So we will about some of the key, key you know, questions, et cetera. And so, that Q&A and debrief is the one that we need you to be much more interactive about. Certainly during the simulation, there are certain key decisions that we will um, uh, also expect interaction and key uh, decisions from you via polling and chat. Um, any questions or clarifications at this point in time, just please uh, uh, pop them in chat or, or raise your hands and then I'll um, um, attempt to respond. But essentially the point is that these issues that I've been covering about the key takeaways, they cover a very broad range of fields, both the classical aspects of philosophy uh, and, and you know, creativity and, and many of the things that are covered in a traditional liberal arts type of pursuit. Uh, but also in the blue corner, a lot of very interesting uh, aspects related to neuroscience and cognitive psychology, uh, et cetera. And that's really the whole point about the beauty of trying of you know pursuing your MBA uh, based in a truly multidisciplinary social sciences university because um, uh, we appreciate that, you know, uh, and hopefully through the, the course of this simulation and this session as well, you'll appreciate that decision making is much more than crunching numbers. It's, it's a combination of the ability to crunch the right numbers, but then also, uh, uh, you know, have uh, 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 ability to imagine the, 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 uh, the art of, of, of alternatives, et cetera. So there was a very good question about, can you explain synthesis? Uh, 
uh, and how it plays its part in decision making is a very good question. And that's, I think, the interesting thing is that conventional or limited rudimentary thinking about MBAs focuses mainly on analysis, which is about taking a problem and breaking it down into, into smaller parts. But, uh, and I'm not saying that that's not helpful, that's certainly helpful, but then synthesis is, is a super, is a super ordinate skill to that, which is essentially joining dots, taking, you know, so what conclusions from different bits of information, bit, different bits of analyses and explaining and, and combining that to make a bigger meta, uh, a bigger piece of understanding uh, 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 so that you have a better sense of what's going on. And we'll get, you know, we'll, you'll get a bit more sense of that uh, even as we play the simulation, you'll get different bits of information. Some bits will be missing, key bits will be, and you'll need to decide which bits that are missing, you know, what's missing, you know, is the key information there or missing? And is the key information which which one is reliable and which one to trust and rely on, which one to ignore, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then do some some joining of the dots or synthesis from the various bits to uh, reach your decisions. So, um, and and this quote you will see even in the simulation about the real voyage of discovery consisting not necessarily in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. In other words, I think very interesting things happen when there are certain types of brains who look at the same information that other people are looking, but they're able to draw very different conclusions than the rest of the, the herd uh, who are pursuing the rat race or repeating standardized motherhood cliches. Uh, and that's certainly clearly a helpful skill in this very, very high flux world that we're seeing where clearly uh, the rates of inflection uh, uh, and the rates of rapid change and uncertainty and flux are increasing clearly on the technology dimension. But the interesting point is, it's not only technology, those rates of flux uh, and uncertainty are also happening uh, along a variety of mega trends, uh, not least of which the COVID stuff that we've been through over the past year. And by no means is that going away. You know, other such climate uh, change and other such uh, ecosystem overload uh, impacts will continue to play out. And many of these issues that you see here are at least, uh, you know, four or five year old. There's a four year old slide in terms of megatrends, but you can clearly see how many of these are increasingly affecting and impacting uh, uh, the opportunity landscape with increasing flux. So a bit of a, a, a you know key um, um, point about the uh, strategic cognition simulation. So as I mentioned, the limitations of what we will play today is that perhaps some of the concepts that this game tests will be rusty for you or may not have been formally covered with all the participants in this group. So don't worry too much about that. You will be building you know those building blocks uh, over your MBA journey. Uh, this is more about sort of showing you that even more that, you know, just knowing the names of these concepts is not enough. Learning how to apply them uh, uh, is important. And like I said, this demo is a, is, a, is a group and in a synchronous mode for the limited amount of time, no pauses, no et cetera. And we will only cover a very small fraction of the possible game outcomes and levels. Um, and we'll try to make choices based on majority polling. So during the simulation, my suggestion is let's make sure that the, all of your sounds are muted. And if you, uh, uh, you know, you can, for the purposes of, uh, from here on now, when we're running simulation, you can keep your videos off. Um, I will too. And when the polling bar, uh, bar shows up, you can adjust it and move it to a side or uh, down below or so that your view of the screen of the simulation is uh, distracted as less as possible, right? Um, and uh, so these are the tips for making the playing simulation today. Treat this as a realistic role play, no distractions and focus your attention. Listen very carefully to the dialogues. Look very carefully at the exhibits that are being shown to you uh, during the simulation. And uh, as, I, as we had given you the instructions for, try to play, you know, do this uh, webinar from a, uh, with a, as large a screen as possible, preferably not your mobile phone preferably a laptop or a tablet. Uh, and then put in your decision, your strategic decision as quickly as you have ready. Uh, no earlier, no later. 
uh, because the, the, the decisions are fairly fast paced and we will be closing the polls uh, fairly quickly. All right, so uh, with that, with no further ado, and also uh, in the polls, there will be polls during the simulation, where you, which will be multiple choice, where you enter your, uh, your choice of your strategic decision. And after each key strategic decision, I will ask you to put in chat uh, and in that, in your replies, make sure you, you, you use the chat option of replying to everyone, your key rationale for your specific strategic decision. Why did you choose that? You don't, right? So just uh, write one key word about what choice you made, what decision you chose, and then explain, you know, in, in, in literally as few words, let, you know, no, no more than a sentence or, or two, your key rationale for that decision. Okay, I hope that's clear. Let me now try and get the um, simulation going. Escape this, okay. All right. What do you think happened? Let's move to the next part and do a bit of a debrief. Right, now is the time to uh, unmute yourselves and you can either put it in chat or um, preferably speak up what are your key learnings from the game that we reached today? We've obviously bust the company. Any thoughts about which was the key key decision that got us in trouble? You can unmute unmute them. You can unmute yourselves if you want. Not shutting down the uh, business could have actually uh, been the cause for why we busted the company. Right, that's clearly the case. But is that the real is that the real decision that got us in trouble? So I think before entering the Indonesian market, uh, we should have done a bit more market research and maybe. Uh, uh, understand, like maybe try to um, predict if uh, there will be rivals coming in or um, mm -hmm. like it will be, be change in regulations. Very good point, Aditya. Very good point. Very good point. We basically got sucked in because the two choices were to acquire or organic, but both choices were to enter the market in Indonesia, right? Yes. And that's a fairly narrow framed decision, but at the end, there was also a choice to do neither, right? And as Aditya very rightly said, we knew nothing at all about the Indonesia market when we were making this decision. The people who were presenting us the information was the investment banker who makes money by selling, you know, on the commission when the deal gets done, right? In fact, the investment banker makes money twice over because he also makes money on the additional money that we raise to fund the acquisition, right? There's clear information given that you have, if you go down this route, you will have only five months of cash burn left, right? And there's zero information about the Indonesian market, any of those sub-issues that Aditya very rightly points out now, right? competitors, regulation, what is that market like? We know nothing about that. We do know that we are struggling in our home market. We are not doing well. What is going to Indonesia do for us other than you know buying growth? It doesn't do anything for our home market problems. So we've ended up in this case, picking battles on multiple fronts and accelerating our cash flow. What's the key assumption we made about the cash burn? 
when we went ahead with this? What was the key implicit assumption? Not explicit, but implicit. What was the assumption you guys made about the funding as you went ahead with the acquisition? Go ahead, speak up, please. Aditya? Um, so, so uh, like the investors said that uh, they're there in the long term, like they're there for the long term. So uh, maybe like I, I assume, like I did that assumption that, okay, funds will be available for, for long term mm. and investors are clearly um, in, interested in going there. Mm. So you'd certainly, you certainly made the assumption whether the investor, whether you made that assumption because the invest, one of the investors, by the way, not right. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> different investors can have different agendas, but it seems that these particular investors, and this is also, as you can observe with many so-called e-commerce and many so-called um, digital players, most of the investors seem to be more interested in getting the players to burn more money so that they can raise more money rather than necessarily whether the money is being used wisely or not. If you notice, right? And that's because the investors want these people, these uh, the entrepreneur and the promoter to get used to the drug of getting more and more money because then the investor has more and more control of the company. Yes. So you understood the point? Yeah. <laughs> but essentially, <laughs> essentially the bigger point, the bigger, the key point is that we all assumed, at least those of us who wanted to go for the acquisition and which was the majority decision. Uh, Himachal, are you able to show up that poll again? Poll number two or poll number yeah. one? Yes, I you just flash that up, then, you know, that was clearly the majority decision. But the point is, and even Biddy says so in the, this thing that, you know, we've been raising money all this time, we can raise money again, right? But as we have seen over the last few years, investor sentiments can change very quickly, right? And it wasn't just because of COVID. In fact, COVID, because of the loose supply of money, you know, money is, rap you know, ridiculously available. But if you, if you remember in that sort of um, couple of years ago, uh, before Flipkart um, got uh, bought up by Walmart, uh, investor sentiment had substantially died down. There wasn't hardly any funding available. That's really, really why Snap Deal almost went under, if you remember, right? So as you, yeah, this was the result. Thank you, Himanshu. But clearly, you know, the majority of you <laughs> went for uh, oh no, this is the first poll. Can you show the second poll result, please? Yeah. Even here, the majority of you. No, this is still the first poll result. Yeah, here. Even here. So, uh, you know, 17 people wanted to go to Indonesia, the combined or organic and acquire. Only one person was saying neither, right? Who was this one person who said neither? Was that you, Aditya? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Who was it? Who was the person who said neither? Speak up, please. But the point is everybody else made this implicit assumption that funding will continue. Uh, and so, so think about it. Think about this. Three key points. One, we're struggling in our home market. We are going from that Ranbhumi to another Ranbhumi, which we know nothing about. <laughs> And we know and there's no logical link between what going into this other run bhumi will help with our main home market. No understanding, no logic. Secondly, we know nothing about this new market that we're going to. Thirdly, we're making this assumption that because we've been continuing to raise billions of dollars in the past, you know, we can continue to raise billions of dollars going forward. So let's go ahead and invest this money. And even though we will only have less than five months burn left. Right? And then when we have limited burn left, we choose to continue to operate, even though, you know, uh, uh, all of the information and evidence suggests that this is a wrong decision. And if we need, want, you know, to stay alive, we're better off reducing our burn and reducing the number of fronts on which we back. Right? So what have we learned? 
What have we learned? So there's a very valid uh, question or comment saying, I don't know anything about any of this finance jargon and stuff like that. That's fair enough. And that's the finance jargon you will definitely learn in, 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 uh, in any MBA program. But the question is, you know, what have you learned about, or what will you learn in a good MBA program? First point is avoid narrow framing. Many a time when we make either or choices, uh, they are very often can be um, not the most effective way of framing the question or the choice. Why can it not be and? Why can't it be some other choice? Why can't it be neither? So whenever you're facing a narrow choice, should I quit this job or should I not quit this job? You know, and you're getting fussed. Should I, you know, go, go do an MBA or not do an MBA? Should I go to JGBS or not go to JGBS? That's not the right way. That's too narrow a phrase. You know, it should be, what is the other alternatives, et cetera, et cetera. So th this is where many of you got sucked in because the original framing was an either or, either acquire or organic. The neither choice came in a lot later. And even if it wasn't given to you, you should think about that, those, those kinds of things, because the risk reward is, is not clear. Another key point is for strategic market entry decisions, we must think beyond just the availability of the money. This decision, the, the way the, the, the protagonists framed you, they kept just talking about, well, the money is available, use the money, what else are you going to do with the money? But there was zero information about what, how attractive this market is or what are the risk rewards. And that's clearly some of the things that you will learn as you go. Many of the points that Dithya mentioned uh, are, are, are you know, typically you will learn a bunch of strategy frameworks, et cetera, uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a good MBA program. But, but the point is not just learning those frameworks. The point is having that basic common sense and those antenna and or if not, or developing that risk reward trade-off and thinking about not just the information that's being given to you or presented to you, but what are the key other things that should be considered, should be factored into this decision. Um, and part of the thing is that there is an implicit assumption that many of us make that the Ubers of this world, the Amazons of this world, most digital players, you know, have millions, uh, hundreds of, uh, you know, billions of users and, you know, are spread across very broad geographic footprints. And, but, you know, that's a, that's a story. And, and that dominant narrative has uh, significant weaknesses. And for those of you who are interested, there's a bunch of, um, um, links shared in that PDF document to think the deeper beyond the digital hype and the winner take all uh, uh, assumptions about digital platforms, um, which are dominant hypes, but there are, there are certain, you know, dig deeper into that. There's certainly a lot of cause for pause and food for thought. And again, if uh, I think there are some of my videos, links mentioned in there, otherwise you can Google my name and, um, uh, digital hype or the chimera of India's um, digital billion users and um, you'll get some links and uh, interesting videos uh, around that but thinking more deeply about the limits of the dominant narrative by point number three and then uh, as you go through in your MBA journey you will certainly cover more corporate finance and those sorts of issues um, which uh, at this stage, if you if you you know you didn't need to really know any of that stuff to to worry about, but that would be more advanced uh, stuff that we can cover as you go through your MBA journey. All right, I think we've got um, these were the key learnings from the simulation, but hopefully this is the point that um, would. Um, bring us back to some of the key you know this is an illustration of um, some of the points that I was making about, even if you have some of these toolkits, or at least in conventional MBAs, you will certainly cover, corp, you know, NPV, IRR, PESTLE framework, uh, Porter's model, and those sorts of things. So, you know, conventional basic MBAs will cover those sorts of things, but only really good programs will encourage you to think beyond that and push yourself to start to focus on the effective use of these tools 
and hone and develop your, you know, your business judgment and common sense. And that's certainly, you know, you made a good, good, good choice in thinking about and, and, and deciding to come to a program like JGBS. And these would be the sorts of more advanced steps of the ladder that I would encourage you to start to think about and prepare your minds and start doing those kinds of readings. And that's where those are the sorts of things that are mentioned in the some of the beginnings of those curations in that PDF document that you have. So I encourage those of you interested uh, to, um, to go further on that and look through that. Any other questions or comments? I'm happy to stay back for a little while, but we are, uh, you know, we've covered our sort of gone beyond our time uh, that was allotted, even though we started a little bit late, but I'm happy to, those of you who'd like to stay on, I'm happy to stay on for any other questions and answers. Those of you who would like to sign off now, feel free to do so. All right, so for those of you who are staying on, please feel free to fire any questions either here in chat or speak it out, preferably speak it out, that will be faster. Very silent group you have managed to select, Himanshu. Any questions? or comments. Okay, so Ashri has some interesting point that the numbers given in the table were real and market research was done in the right way. Um, not able to figure out from your chat message what, um, what you mean. Does that mean that that was an assumption you'd made? Not clear. Not clear. Anyway, anybody has any questions or comments or clarifications or should we sign off? <laughs> Mr. Akash wants to know placement spark. No, that's not the part that we're covering in today's masterclass, I'm afraid. <laughs> I, I would suggest you take that up with uh, Mr. Himanshu offline. This is not a general information about the JGBS MBA program. This was specifically a masterclass on strategic thinking. Any other questions specifically related to today's masterclass topic or comments? So, so uh, in a situation like this, like how, how, how would you go about convincing the investor that okay maybe we should not go into this market because he clearly wants to go there but how do yeah, that's you a very good uh, question that's a very good point and so actually the real point is that in the uh, information that's available there are, there are clear risks right yes and there are there are risks of busting the company right <laughs> Uh, because rule number one in, in any venture, particularly in a high growth entrepreneur, never run out of cash. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so the first interesting point is that it will not necessarily be that you're saying, no, we're not going into this market. You would be more about a risk reward trade off saying we don't know enough about those points that you mentioned Aditya, and we need to understand those. Right. Okay. Okay. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> And if somebody, and so the investment banker will always say, we are running out of time. This deal will go away, right? Yes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, okay. you know, you see what I'm saying? Does that begin to answer your question? So it's not necessary. I wasn't saying that you're on the basis of, I'm not saying on the basis of this information that you don't enter the market. Mm -hmm. You just say on the basis of this information, the risk reward information seems to suggest that there's a, and there, because you have zero information about the, about that market, right? Mm -hmm. That does suggest cause for pause and either you make the effort and buy some time to, to uh, understand that. Or if you say there is no time, you need to make that decision right now, then you, you know, on the balance of risk reward, <laughs> you at least get to stay alive, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Now the investor will say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
एंड देन यू हैव सेकंड मैं तेरा जवाई हूं या तेरा बेटा हो या तू मेरा इन्वेस्टर है बात समझ में आई यस इन अदर वर्ड्स इन अदर वर्ड्स पवन गंडोक विल मेक अ वेरी डिफरेंट डिसीजन फ्रॉम मुकेश अंबानी सन बिकॉज रिस्क रिवॉर्ड एपिटाइट्स आर डिफरेंट अंडरस्टैंड यस सो व्हाट इज योर रिस्क रिवॉर्ड एपिटाइट मेक सेंस यस मजा आ रहा है Uh, yes sir this is uh, inside so the, the point i'm making is that the only reason i switch into the vernacular is just to drive home the sniffing salts about real wisdom as opposed to conventional mba jargon speak how is the irr irr is pointing in favorable direction but what is the you know what is the assumption that it is built on <laughs> all of the value in the irr or the npv is coming from the assumption that the terminal value once we sell this we are acquiring this business uh, this time this many times of sales and we will be able to sell this business to somebody this many times of sales <laughs> right and and very quickly as you can see because we know nothing about the environment and the competitive situation and the regulatory those things can change and they can be predictably expected to change and all of a sudden within less than a year all of the assumptions about the business economics go for a toss these things can happen right and one needs to learn to anticipate those things etc mm -hmm. et yes yes what were you saying go ahead well i what i was asking is on what factor should we take calls for a market with little to no inform information in hand so that's builds uh, that's to some extent was sort of the points i was discussing previously right here, just just now yes because it's one of those things about risk reward right so by all means so there are many situations particularly in high flux and uncertainty you you there are many situations where you will not i either not have the time because the opportunity will go past or you will not be able to gather all of those kinds of information right yeah so at the end of the day it comes down to risk reward right risk reward trade off i think my question little late i should have asked it earlier but that I, what i'm saying is that that's yeah. the point i've already covered this right yeah, so yeah. if, if you fa the key is to recognize that if you run out of cash <laughs> right you will not you will not be able to stay alive right yeah no matter what no matter what so it's a little bit like saying it's a little bit like saying i'm going to ask you to jump out from this building there is no fire but there might be a fire so you should jump out of the building and the question is well how high am i and is there a parachute down below well there might be mai hu na that's jump jump kar le beta right yeah perfect makes sense yeah Make sense? Yeah. what have we learned also by, within this example power of analogy right now the fundas are clear <laughs> when i use that analogy right so that's yes so that's what i mean by risk reward if 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 in this particular case the risk seem to be very very high that you could die yeah right? well it depends from company to company there but in other situations that's what i meant by when i said if you are mukesh ambari son versus if i was right yeah what is your question what are the parachutes right how yeah. high is the jump <laughs> how high would you fall can you recover so risks always take those risks that you can survive that you think there is a fair chance of surviving and you can learn from okay right i maybe i shouldn't say always but be will i should say be more willing to take those risks that you think you can survive and learn from and i would add if you think that the reward up, upside is worth the risk downside then probably take that risk i, Not I think, yeah i think you are saying that uh, uh, um, don't um, think about what will happen instead of what will happen uh, i'm not clear what you mean by that when you say don't think about what will happen instead of what will happen i'm not clear what you mean go ahead yash 
Uh, that's also. I mean, uh, what it's like. Don't let the fear of what would happen. Here. Interrupt well, you. I'm saying no. I, 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 I'm saying it's not a case of don't let the fear of what would happen interrupt you. Think about the worst case outcomes. Think about, you know, if the worst case outcome is that you you could die. Then you have to think about whether the reward of making more money out of it is worth that existential risk, right? Yeah. Right. But if the worst case, in an, in some other scenario, if the worst case option is that you might lose some money, you might have some egg on your face, right? But you will learn something out of that exercise, which you can then, you know, uh, uh, deploy in some other way to make more money, right? Then that may be a risk worth taking, right? Hello. Hello. Yeah, well, that's all. Right. Okay. So yeah, it's about as Shreyas rightly says, about taking calculated risks. But also, in some cases, what that really means is sometimes people only put the calculate in the simulation. The calculation was only about the upside. There was no mention of the risk because people are trying to frame you in a certain way. And so part of this, the superior skill. So that's what the point is. Plain vanilla MBA students are taught how to do analysis and understand the basic jargon of strategy frameworks and corporate finance. Good MBA students who make the effort and who are mentored and who go through that higher level effort would also say, ah, this is the information that is being presented, but what are the key things that is missing? What are the other things that I need to know to make the right decision? Make sense? Maybe the non-financial performance indicators would help. So in this particular case, it was actually the non-financial ones. Actually, in this particular case, none of the financial calculations made sense. The more important questions were, as Jasmine asked, well, what is going to Indonesia do to help with our home market business? That's the one. That's the bigger. There was no answer to that question. Right? Nobody answered that logical question in that dialogue. She asked that question, right? <laughs> Divakivati Jalawe, as my favorite jo uh, statement is, Mentos Kana se Divakivati ni jalti, Divakivati jalani sab pade. So Divakivati, <laughs> you guys will have to switch on before you come to JGBS. We will help you <laughs> go further with that. But we can't make you Divakivati start. Make sense? Yes, sir. Like if we were given the goodwill of the company or some other non-financial performance indicators, the decision would have been different. Perhaps. But I'm saying it was not so much the perhaps, it was the relevant information would have been more about these key questions that I said. Well, how is going to Indonesia helping me with my main strategic home market objective? How is it helping? Right. Two, what do I understand about the comparative situation and the attractiveness of this new market and my ability to succeed in this? One is, is this market in, interesting and attractive in general? Second, do I have, a, have some reasonable basis of competing and being effective in this game? Right? These are the key questions. And so if there was some, in, you know, uh, uh, and that would essentially, uh, those two questions would essentially feed into understanding the risk reward, right? So Ishta, I think the good news is that, I don't know if she's still around, but the, is she, let me just see if she's still around. No, she's left. That's fine. All right. Any other questions or should we wrap up? So Shorya has uh, raised this question about, it's basically about calculating the results before going for any decision. I would say it's about thinking through the, re the results. So in this case, there wasn't necessarily a major calculation to be done to about the risk, but there was some amount of that done in the sense that it showed you that if you go ahead with this acquisition, you'll have less than five months of cash burn. Then the related part was the implicit assumption that we will be able to raise funding because we have done it in the past. So is that really a logical, and this is what I mean by critical reasoning, unbundling these key assumptions and logic. What is the assumption? What is fact? 
and from these what is the rationale and logic that i'm implying and is this a valid conclusion or can other conclusions also be drawn or are they more plausible conclusions etc cetera, etc cetera. so that's you know and that's the whole point is about that i was making about uh critical reasoning and and all of those other things that i made uh in that um, in that summary slide that i had shared this one okay i think this is a reasonable point to now wrap up we've kind of been going for about an hour and a half um so this is just meant to be as i said in any case uh a taster or a sampler um and i hope you've gotten some some good feel for um you know the difference between a plain vanilla class and more insightful uh, learning journeys and the the type of more superior value add uh and the kind of higher level journey that uh, you know we try and help and exhort we i just to be crystal clear we can't say that we're going to take you uh uh and get you to the pinnacle of this journey we can encourage you by showing you the 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 real journey worth pursuing in developing your strategic thinking skills and learning how to apply these various tools in specific contexts but at the end of the day the effort has to be done by you the original spark of intellectual curiosity has to be with you and we can help you hone and nurture that and um that's uh, you know and also uh, help you know create simulations like this which uh, uh which are immersive as well as real world internships and real world mentoring and real world experiential projects and those kind of things and that's really where the value of uh, of a more superior uh, differentiated uh, mba Uh, comes from so i hope that it's starting to give you a little bit more of a flavor for what some of these points uh would mean and the difference that it makes in the real world success uh etc all right all the best good luck shabak hair enjoy yourselves and uh, you know if you attend future master class sessions come better prepared and definitely be more interactive and uh, you know that's the basis of um, of real uh, real learning all the best bye bye thank you so much sir and yeah, i really they don't know that you're sitting in australia right now and it's close to one year <laughs> over there yes it is so i really it appreciate is. you uh, taking out time and i would say odd time for the students of jgbs my pleasure my pleasure i was uh, i i had nothing to do after india lost so i wasn't watching cricket anyway <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh, i'm i'm glad and you know it'll be good to get some feedback and uh, happy to do more of these um if the students find uh, you know participants find it um, interesting and helpful all right i'm going to just so. stop the recording let me just make sure that i've stopped the recording